Tens of thousands of chemical products are being imported into Hong Kong for a variety of reasons. They are used for production, manufacture and re-export purposes. For example, petroleum products or paints which make our household a more beautiful place to live in. Although chemicals are useful in many ways, some of them may be hazardous to our health and can cause a certain degree of damage to our environment. Chemicals can be hazardous in various ways. According to the Dangerous Goods Ordinance, dangerous goods can be listed into 10 categories. They are explosives, compressed gases, corrosive substances, poisonous substances, substances giving off inflammable vapors, substances which become dangerous by interaction with water, strong supporters of combustion, readily combustible substances, substances liable to spontaneous combustion, and other dangerous substance. Chemicals can also be hazardous because of their radioactive, sensitive, allergy, <coughs> asthma, <coughs> or cancer-causing nature. Therefore, we have to make sure that chemicals are handled in a proper manner. Otherwise, it can cause severe damage to our health or even create a huge number of casualties. We have to abide by the safety regulations and follow the proper procedures in the import, manufacture, transport, package, storage, use and disposal of chemicals. Some of the more common laws applicable to the safe handling of chemicals include Dangerous Goods Ordinance, Factories and Industrial Undertakings Ordinance, Waste Disposal Ordinance, Pesticides Ordinance, Radiation Ordinance and their subsidiary legislation. The Dangerous Goods Ordinance designates that a proper license or exemption has to be granted prior to the use manufacture, storage and transport of dangerous goods. The Fire Services Department makes routine inspections to the storage location of these dangerous goods to make certain that the regulation is properly complied with. A license has to be obtained from the Fire Services Department in the land transport of Category 2, compressed gases and Category 5, substances giving off inflammable vapors of the dangerous goods application and exemption regulations. For the transport of explosives, category 1, and liquid petroleum gas, a license has to be obtained from the Civil Engineering Department and the Electrical and Mechanical Services Department respectively. With regard to the sea transport of dangerous goods, the Marine Department ensures that all vessels calling at Hong Kong and having any dangerous goods on board meet the safety requirements under the dangerous goods shipping regulations and the merchant shipping safety dangerous goods and marine pollutants regulation. Local vessels that are used in the transport of dangerous goods are also required to obtain a license from this department. The Civil Aviation Department is responsible for the enforcement of the dangerous goods consignment by air safety regulations. Under these regulations, shippers and freight forwarders must ensure all dangerous goods are properly classified, packed, marked, labeled and documented before they are offered for air transportation. 
Under the Pesticides Ordinance, all pesticides, whether they are imported, manufactured locally or repackaged, have to be registered and licensed by the Agricultural, Fisheries and Conservation Department. All licensed pesticides are categorized into two types according to their use and toxicity. The majority of the ready-made and home-use pesticides belong to the first type and the rest classified as the second type. Under the Radiation Ordinance, all persons who import, sell, manufacture, produce, deal in or with, possess and use radioactive substances have to acquire a license from the Radiation Board. The Radiation Health Unit under the Department of Health handles the applications for licenses. Any substance with specific activity exceeding 75 BQ per gram is considered a radioactive substance. Items or devices that may contain radioactive substance include radioluminous watches, ionizing smoke detectors, mantles for kerosene lanterns, and moisture density gauges, etc. However, so long as we handle and store them properly, it is still safe to use these items. 有啲化學品嘅牌照申請會涉及多過一個政府部門，例如申請輸入及輸出炸藥，就要向工業貿易處度遞交申請書，但就要先得到土木工程處嘅礦務及石礦部加簽。咁所以咧，喺申請任何許可證或者係牌照之前，最好都係向相關嘅部門問清楚，或者喺政府有關嘅網頁度查閲。To ensure the well-being of our health and the environment. All companies should prepare relevant policies and implement safety management systems for hazardous chemical products. They should also provide guidelines for their staff to make certain that the transport, usage and disposal of these dangerous goods are done in an appropriate manner. Apart from the commitment by the management, we also need the concerted effort and cooperation from the other departments, such as procurement, warehouse, and the workmen to put the policies and procedures into practice. Each company should also assign designated personnel to carry out routine inspection at the work area and make a record of all the relevant information, such as the type of chemical, quantity stored and location, quantity used and location, etc. Let us use this form as reference. In addition, the company should check with the fire services department or other relevant government departments for the legal requirements with regard to the storage of these dangerous goods and make sure that the amount stored does not exceed the exempted quantity. And according to the nature of these chemicals, they should be stored in separate locations. You can make reference to the information provided by vendors. In the management of these hazardous chemicals, one of the most important aspects is the health and safety information of each chemical, which is often provided by the suppliers in the form of a Material Safety Data Sheet, or MSDS. The MSDS details the identity and composition of the chemical, safety and health hazards, and safety measures, etc. Other than the MSDS, the management should also make sure that the emergency and first aid procedures and equipment are in place and the firefighting equipment is routinely checked by registered fire service installation contractors. It is extremely dangerous to use or store excessive amounts of dangerous goods and the labeling of these goods can help minimize the risk. According to the Factories and Industrial Undertakings Dangerous Substances Regulations, each chemical container should be properly labeled to indicate to the workman the possible risks and safety measures when using that chemical. Each label should contain the name of the dangerous substance, a risk symbol, particular risks inherent in the chemical, and the safety precautions required regarding the chemical. 要有效咁控制化學品嘅風險，首先就要做風險評估。呢、这個環節係不可或缺嘅。并且应该由接受过有关训练嘅人士负责，目的系协助避免危害或者系控制已经出现嘅风险。
Risk assessment is an evaluation process to assess the likelihood of the hazardous properties of a chemical or the hazards of a chemical process causing harm to the staff. It starts off with the identification of all hazardous chemicals used or present in the work process, the possible safety and health hazards it may pose and who might be affected. Then we have to determine the frequency and duration of exposure to the chemical, extent of the exposure, and the effectiveness of control and protective measures in minimizing exposure, so as to evaluate whether the workers are overexposed to the chemical. Some of the practicable control measures include the substitution of hazardous chemicals with less hazardous ones, isolation or enclosure of the source, work area or the worker, improvement in the workplace ventilation, installation of local exhaust ventilation systems, and the use of personal protective equipment. The workman should work in accordance with the safety measures such as no smoking or eating while handling hazardous chemicals, maintenance of good personal hygiene and adherence to the safe operating procedures. Training should be provided to the workmen on the general safety rules and measures in handling hazardous chemicals, including how to read the label and MSDS of each chemical, as well as the work and emergency procedures. The workmen should also be trained on the proper selection, use, inspection and maintenance of their personal protective equipment. The personal protective equipment includes gloves, safety goggles, respiratory protective equipment, protective clothing and safety shoes and boots, etc. Another vital element of the training process is the emergency preparedness and procedures in dealing with chemical spills at the workplace. This is to ensure that the staff is familiar with the emergency response plan and the appropriate action to take. The management should organize regular drills and make amendments to the emergency response plan whenever necessary. In addition, appropriate emergency equipment should be in place and properly maintained including fire extinguishers, showers or eye wash stations, etc. First aid knowledge is of course mandatory for all staff. The safety procedures should be closely monitored and regularly reviewed to ascertain that they are appropriate. The line management should make sure that these procedures are communicated to the workmen in an effective and efficient manner. The inspection and audit should cover the type of chemicals in the work area, the use and the storage location, method and quantity of each chemical. Chemical hazards are not limited to industrial areas and factories. They can be present in hospitals or clinics because of their medical, laboratory or sanitary use. The laboratories in secondary schools and universities also use hazardous chemicals in their teaching and research. Apart from the employer, the line management and workmen should all work hand in hand to ensure that safety at handling chemicals is achieved. In addition, the respective government departments will also carry out on-site routine checks. For example, the Labor Department conducts regular visits to make sure that both the employer and employees are working in compliance with laws, for example, the Factories and Industrial Undertakings Dangerous Substances Regulations and the Occupational Safety and Health Regulation. When necessary, the Labor Department will collect on-site chemical or air samples for further analysis and evaluation. 香港每年生产超过十万吨的化学废料，咁如果呢啲废料唔适当咁样储存处理同埋弃置咧，就会伤害到工作人员同埋公众，而且咧亦都会破坏环境嘅。Under the waste disposal chemical waste general regulation, 
any person who produces or leads to the production of chemical waste is called a chemical waste producer and has to be registered with the Environmental Protection Department. He is also responsible for the proper packaging, labeling and storage of chemical waste. A licensed chemical waste collector will then pick up these chemical waste for proper disposal. The Chemical Waste Treatment Center in Qingyi is owned by the government of Hong Kong. It is an integrated center which meets the environmental protection standard in waste treatment and disposal and is capable of handling a majority of the categorized chemical waste in Hong Kong. The authorized operators of the center also provide chemical waste collection service to the chemical waste producers. Under the waste disposal charges for disposal of chemical waste regulation, users of the chemical waste treatment center are required to pay for the service. The implementation of the polluters pay principle is to encourage the users to reduce, recycle and reuse the chemical waste. Hong Kong has to deal with a huge number of hazardous chemicals every day. The Analytical and Advisory Services Division under the Government Laboratory is responsible for providing support and advisory services to the various government departments on this issue. The primary function of this division is to provide scientific data and professional advice to all statutory bodies and law enforcing departments for research, analysis and assessment purposes. The work involved frequently requires special investigation. The division employs more than 100 professionals and technicians, completing hundreds of thousands of tests and reports every year. The government has spent enormous effort in ensuring the safe handling of dangerous goods. The Occupational Safety and Health Council is also playing a vital role in increasing public awareness of chemical safety through informational pamphlets, exhibitions, seminars, public inquiry hotline, training and consultancy services. And the users, including both the employers and employees, should make sure that the safety procedures in dealing with hazardous chemicals are taken seriously and strictly followed. 防患於未然,這樣就可以令到最危險的地方都變成安全健康的地方。<音樂>